Lord Jesus, who is worthy to be praised. I want to ask a question. You know, we own things that are depreciating, and you brought something new on the other day, and it's uh, doesn't look as new to you today. Uh, you have something that's getting older. You have something that's um, it's depreciating in value. But I want to ask you a question. What is it in your life that depreciates the worth of Christ? I want to let you know there's nothing. That's right. Yes. He is the same yesterday, yes. today, and forevermore. And I want you to know, regardless of what you are feeling or what you are dealing with in this present time, our God is worthy to be praised. There's not a time in your life, there's not a single place where you may go where the Lord is not worthy. Let us embrace that. Let us own that our God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Yes, he is. And you know something? As soon as you understand that, don't you know? Situations in your life don't, might, might not change. It might, it might get worse. There might be some things that God has brought in your life that he has brought for the purpose of persisting because he's doing something that you might not have knowledge of. But I want, I want you to know one thing that we can do. We can do like Job. We can bow down and worship him. Regardless of how tough and how hard it is. I want you to notice when they were preaching about Job this morning, Job didn't have the information that we have today. But I want you to know, he obviously had enough if it calls him about our worship. And, and, and a lot of us have got these 66 books. If you won't bow, he didn't have these 66 books, and he did bow. What, what does that come from? It comes from knowing God. Yes. Having a personal relationship with yeah. Him. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Such a relationship in which Satan says, I, I would like to get to Him, but God, you got a hedge around Him. I've been trying to touch Him, but I can't. Because you won't permit me to. Oh, but thank God that God knows what He has put in those of whom He has chosen. And he will be glorified in their lives. I want to say good morning to everyone. Say good morning to the elders of Kennedy, Elder Gentry, Winston Holland, the deacons of the Man. Absolute Brother Pim. Our, our good brothers like Brother Rocky. I want to thank God for even thank God for the women here who, who stand for the Gospel will live together. Yes. Thank, thank God for all of you. Right. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. Now this of course is not a passage of scripture that is strange to anyone. You've heard it preached in many different places many different times, and um, I just, I'm just one of those who believe that there's nothing new. Uh, we don't ever try to stand here and give you something new. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of like, I'm just like the relay runner. Um, he doesn't get it, they don't, they don't uh, when they're running around the track, and there's a, there's a team of, of several runners, and when they're running a relay, you don't see them opening up, taking the plastic off a fresh uh, baton and then handing it. No, they hand them the same one that the other runners had before, yeah. before that. Right. Right, I, I just want to pass what was given to me. And that is the word of God. Amen. I just want to preach what the apostles preach. Yeah. I don't I don't want to, I don't have anything new to say. I just want to say what the Lord would say. So if we can, we want to um, stir your minds and remember this. Look at Matthew chapter 16. Matthew chapter 16. And um, we'll just focus on 13 through 19. Verses 13 through 19, we'll read those. Okay? 
It says, when Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I have some man Yeah. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, and or one of the prophets. He said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Bardona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. Yes. And I say unto thee, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, yes, sir. whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. And I just want to give you a title. The title is going to come from the verse that's going to say, Upon this rock. All right. All right. Upon this rock. Yeah. Amen. Thank the Lord. The title is Upon This Rock. Amen. What's the Lord the word of prayer? Father, we ask you in the precious name of Jesus. Father, that even as you see our hearts and see our minds today, we pray, that, Father, that we'll be made more conformable to your image. We pray today, Father, that all that you are calling for us to be, Father, we look to you to make us that. Yes. Yes. Lord, may, may we submit to what you command. Yes. May our lives be a, a testimony yes. of your living yes. grace. Yes. We pray, Father, that you give understanding while we're here. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 We understand the need, really the overview of, of, of the book of Matthew where it's focus is, is upon showing that Christ is the Lord with the Messiah. We understand that he often gives many Old Testament sightings concerning the Son of Man and proving not only through his genealogy in the first chapter, but also showing us through many Old Testament quotations yes. in places where they were fulfilled. That which was spoken of uh, through the prophets and by Moses, uh, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is proving that this is that very Messiah yes. that has been prophesied. Right. And um, we look here in chapter 16. Um, we know in this particular scripture uh, that prior to these verses, in which we're going to look at this morning, that uh, Jesus was confronted or the Pharisees came with the Sadducees, they came and they tempted, tempted him, desired him that he would show them a sign from heaven. Of course, Jesus answered and said unto them, uh, when it is evening, he said, it will be fair weather for the sky is red. In the morning, it, and in the morning, it will be foul weather today for the sky is red and lowering. Oh, you hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky, but you cannot discern the sign of the times. Wicked and adulterous generations seek it after sign, and there shall no sign be given you unto it but the sign of the prophet Jonas, and he left them and departed. Yes, you have to understand that Jesus had already done many miracles in their midst. In the midst. What is the single sign that will prove his divinity and will authenticate all of his claims? It will be his resurrection. Yes, sir. And to which he points. Uh, Amen. Uh, using as a as a symbol that the prophet Jonah, him being in the belly of the well for three days and three nights. So should the Son of Man be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights, and he will be resurrected. Uh, he was not interested in giving them any more signs. Notice that their intention was wrong from the beginning. They were tending him. Right. They weren't really wanting to know are you the Messiah. Right. And you'll find that Jesus also imparts to his disciples to beware of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And as we move on down to verse number 13, you'll find that Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi. Uh, we gave you a topic upon this rock, but there's four points I want to make today. Uh, Lord be willing, I want to look at the question of public opinion. A pointed question to his disciples, number two, Peter's confession, and number four, the master's response. I will look at the question of public opinion, a pointed question to his disciples, 
Number three, Peter's confession and the master's response. Now, if we look at our, our, our first point, if we will, uh, you'll find that they were coming into the, the coast of Caesarea Philippi. And if you look upon your map, you'll find that Caesarea Philippi sat at the uh, northern part of Palestine. It was right there at the tip of the of Mount Hermon. You've heard of Mount Hermon, right? Mm -hmm. uh, for instance, uh, if you look in uh, Psalms chapter 133, that's the scripture where David says, Behold, how good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Yeah. Yeah. And he lets them know that how it is it is, uh, it is as the precious ointment <coughs> upon the head that run it down upon the beard, even the beard of Aaron, Amen. down to the skirts of his garments. He said it is as the dew of Hermon, right? Mm -hmm. And as the dew that descends upon the mountains of Zion. He says, for there the Lord hath commanded yes. a blessing there, even life evermore. We see a reference there even to the Mount Hermon there in Psalms 133. But this is a particular place where Caesarea Philippi was. Uh, and, and historic evidence gives us that uh, Caesarea Philippi was before called Panea in, Old, in New Testament times. But this city was rebuilt by Philip the Tetrarch, which was right. the son of Herod the Great. To which Philip the Tetrarch uh, renamed the city after uh, the Emperor Tiberius, Caesar Augustus. And so it, it, it was a little bit of his name, a little bit of Philip's name, uh, Caesarea Philippi. It was the city of, 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 of Caesar, if you will, uh, Caesarea Philippi. So you'll find that this city was named after the emperor Tiberius, mm -hmm. Caesar's, or Caesar's city of Philip, if you will. But they're there, and you'll find that um, Jesus asked a question. Who do men say that I, the son of man, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, this don't. You know, this is the single most and greatest question that can be asked. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Because no doubt, the Son of God was moving and living amongst them. But it goes to show you that just because He's amongst them, it doesn't mean that you recognize Him. Uh, mm -hmm. He can be moving about in their midst unrecognized. Right. Because, think about it, if he were truly recognized, what would the response be? Yeah. Would he be treated with contempt? If, if, if you think about it, the same Jesus that when he was a babe in a manger, and the whole world is passing by him, but there are angels in the heavens hmm. saying, glory to God in the heavens. Peace of all earth and good will toward men. All the angels are glorifying him and giving him praise. And yet, mankind is passing by a stable for the God man. Yes. Yes. The only people that came to that place or to that manger were those whom God led to. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Oh, he brings three wise men of the Magi. He brings some shepherds of which the angel appears that were keeping their flock by night. Right. Oh, he lets them know, hey, they were they, when the angel appeared, I mean, they were uh, taken over with terror. And of course, he told them to fear not. For I bring you great tidings of great joy. Yes. For unto thee is born yes. in the city of David a Savior, Lord, which is yes. Christ yes. the Lord. Glory yeah. be to God. Hallelujah. So he can walk amongst them and he's unrecognized. So he's asking the disciples, first of all, what is the public opinion about him? Mm -hmm. Of course, they give him several answers that have been given to him by the public. Notice verse 14. And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, mm -hmm. some Elias, mm -hmm. others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Now think about it, he's, he's talking about men who are already deceased. Yeah, yeah. Right. They're already dead, so right. they're thinking that he's somewhat, uh, one of these prophets resurrected or returned to life. Right. All right. So their answers were really missing the point, mm -hmm. if you will. Right. But on the next point, Jesus asked a pointed question to his disciples, I want you to notice. 
In verse number 15. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? Amen. Whom say ye that I am? Now, when I'm reading this passage of scripture, one thing that comes to my mind is this. And you have to notice Christ being the master teacher, being a rabbi, every moment of their time with him was a teachable moment. Okay? That's right. That's right, Amen. Right. 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 right? Every moment with them is a teachable moment. So, whenever he's asking a question, it's never to gain any information because he's already omniscient. He knows all things. Right, all right. But he, he wants to reveal something of himself to them, and then he wants to show them something of themselves. <laughs> By the way, he already knows. Right, he knows. What's in their hearts. Yes. Right. But oftentimes he'll ask a question so, so that we can be able to see and I, 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 it's funny how God is able to show us things by asking us a question. <laughs> Notice this. He says, um, whom see, say ye that I am? Let's point a question to his disciples. Uh, most of the times when, when a person is, is beginning or embarking upon a ministry, this question would have been asked from the start. <laughs> but Jesus had asked this question from the start. This is Time has elapsed. Mm -hmm. right. And they've seen many things in his ministry. Mm -hmm. And now he waits for this opportunity and asks them this question here. Mm -hmm. Time has elapsed with now, uh, for instance, what are some things that they have witnessed? Well, first of all, they would have witnessed the first miracle there in Cain of Galilee. Right. When he turned water into wine. Of which it says in uh, 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 chapter 2 that not only was Christ invited, but his disciples were also invited yeah. to the wedding. They would have witnessed the healing of the paralytic. Yeah. They, have, they would have witnessed his authoritative teaching. Yes. They would have witnessed his authority over the elements. Right. Remember, prior to this question being asked, they were in a ship at one time, mm -hmm. and they were... Crossing over the sea and a great storm came. Ah. Which they thought they were going to perish. And the Lord rose and rebuked the storm, rebuked the wind. Yeah. Said, Peace be still. Peace. And notice they asked the question, what manner of man is this? Yes, now, they're, not, they're, not, they're asking this question in sheer terror. They would have witnessed the, the healing of the blind man. Yes. They would have witnessed... The healing of the of the leper. They would have witnessed the woman who had the issue of blood. They would have witnessed. I mean, there's so much in Jesus' ministry. In fact, uh, I want you to notice something that was um, said of him, even at the, the onset of his ministry. Notice in John chapter one and verse number forty-five. Now, it's, this is after the Lord had called Andrew and Philip to Himself, right. and of course, um, Andrew went and told Peter about the Messiah. But notice. Uh, in, in John 1 45, it says, Philip finds Nathaniel and saith unto him, This is his admission. Yeah. We have found him of whom Moses and the law and the prophets did write. All right. Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. No doubt, Philip was a very studious individual and was studying the scriptures. Yes. And I mean, that. that that, but no, we have to understand when he makes a statement, what's behind that? We're going to talk about that in a minute. And the thing said unto him, can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, come and see. Now at this particular portion, Jesus is going to reveal something about the thing that only God would know about. Right. He's going to show someone of, of his attribute of omniscience, meaning he knows all things. And notice in this encounter with Nathaniel, notice what the Lord says. Uh, Jesus saw the thing coming to him and said to him, Behold, an Israelite indeed in whom is no God. Do you know what he was really saying when he approached Nathaniel? Behold, this is an Israelite that's not dishonest. This is an Israelite that's sincere and has zeal for the Lord. And then uh, Nathaniel responds and said unto him, Which knowest thou me? Jesus answers and said unto him, Before that Philip called thee, when thou was under, he didn't say just the tree. A lot of trees and, and, and they're in Palestine. But he tells him exactly which tree he was under. The fig tree. I saw 
all thee. No, he's not saying I was around the corner looking at you. He wasn't in the vicinity. He said, I saw you when you were under the tree. And then he said, the thing of Ezra said unto him, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of Israel. Jesus answered and said unto him, Because I said unto thee, I saw thee under the fig tree, believest thou? <laughs> thou shalt see greater things than these. Yeah. And he said unto him, Verily did I say unto you, Hereafter ye shall see heaven open, and the angel of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. All right. Amen. Amen. Yeah. This, this question was to be asked, and I really believe because the disciples, though they were with him, they still held a human point of view of him. Yes, sir. That's right. Wow. Let me prove that. Let me prove that. When, when Jesus begins to talk about his decease and begins to talk about him being handed over to the chief priest, he being arrested and crucified, I want you to notice what Peter says to him. Peter took him and began to rebuke him, saying, Be it far from thee, Lord, this shall not be unto thee. But he turned and said unto Peter, Notice, this happens after Christ asked him that question. After Peter gives him the answer, but it shows that they still held somewhat of a human point of view of him. Notice it says, He says, um, And he turned and said unto Peter, Get thee behind me, Satan. Thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those that be of men. Now, you think about uh, even after Christ, even after his, when he was crucified, and the scripture listed on Zechariah that when the shepherd has been spitting, how the sheep were going to scatter. You'll find that even when Christ was at trial, how Peter denied him, right? You'll find how all the, 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 the disciples were in hiding. Yeah. And even after the resurrection, Jesus had to upbraid them for the unbelief. That's right. Yeah. See, you see, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna get to our point. It says this. He asked him, who say he that I am? It's a very personal question. It's a, it's a question in which we are to take introspection. We are to examine our lives. Yeah. Do we know who he is? Mm. Notice yeah. what he says here. And Simon Peter answered and said, this is Peter's confession, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. Now notice this. This is the same Jesus who not have only called them into fellowship with him, but also called them away from their secular occupations. You see in Matthew chapter 4, where uh, uh, Peter and Andrew were called away from fishing, right? You see where John and James were called away from, uh, from their father also, right? You find in, in Matthew chapter 9, where Levi, one Matthew, was sitting at the, the, uh, the seat of custom, the uh, tax of receipt, and Christ calls them away from his occupations. You find in Matthew chapter 10, where out of all the disciples that were following him, he ordains 12 apostles. He goes and prays upon the mountain, then he comes back and he separates into himself 12 apostles. Okay? You see Jesus also sending them out. Not only the 12 were sent out, but also there were 70 that were sent out. You see the report of the 70 when they came back, what they were rejoicing, and not even the, 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 the spirits were made subject unto them because of his name. Amen. Amen. And he let them know that he didn't want them to rejoice that the subject, that the spirits are made subject unto them, yeah. but that their names are written in heaven. Yeah. He wanted them to rejoice in that rather. Yeah. Now, Peter answers this question, his confession, but notice where this confession comes from. Jesus answered it and said this. And, and, and the master's response, Peter's confession says, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. When he says that you are the Christ, notice that definite article, the Christ. He didn't say you are a Christ. Right. You are the one. You are that anointed priest. You are that anointed king. You are that anointed prophet. Notice we talked about what Philip has said, that he's the one of whom Moses and the prophets spake of. He is that one. Yes, sir. They would have understood that in Moses' writings. They would have understood that in the writings of the prophets, particularly that of Daniel, when he when, when uses words like the Son of Man, which is a messianic term. Yeah. But he says, you're it. Mm -hmm. This is Peter's confession. 
And notice Jesus is going, this, notice the master's response. He's going to show us why he made that confession. Mm -hmm. Praise God. And then, he's going to, and then he's going to show us in making that confession, there is still much that they needed to know about the Messiah. Yes, There's still much they needed to confess, uh, understand, excuse me, understand about the Messiah. So you have to understand, what Jesus was teaching them in three and a half years would be clear to them one day after his resurrection. It would be clear to them after the day of Pentecost. In which the Holy Spirit would bring, would bring back many of the things that Jesus said, and they would be put to pen, of which we have scripture today. I mean, these things would be clear to them. What was clouded to them at one time would one day be clear yeah. to them yes, in the sending of the Spirit. Notice this. Jesus answered and said unto him, uh, Lucky art thou. No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. No luck. Uh, did he say, Lucky art thou? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Did he say, uh, 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 You got it right this time? No, sir. I got another question to ask you. No. Let me tell you something. You don't get this question right unless you can bless. You don't know who he is unless you're blessed. But look at blessed. It comes from a word which also means happy. And in being brought in fellowship and, and, and with the Lord and, 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 and becoming a partaker with him, we come into this state of bliss, if you will. Uh, they, they, they can't be altered. We, we're blessed. He said, Blessed art thou, yeah. Simon Bar Jonah, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee. He didn't tell Peter, but well, I guess here it is. You, you saw my miracles. Uh, you, uh, you witnessed my authoritative teaching. You saw my authority over spirits and over the elements. You, that's only one conclusion you could come to. No. They saw all this and still didn't know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. We have a witness with ancient Israel, don't we? Because there were many that saw his, ministry, saw his miracles, but guess what? What they saw, it was not mixed with faith. Right. What they witnessed was not mixed with faith. Right. Give you a scripture. When I think about Hebrews. Excuse me, I'll just turn to the scripture very quickly. In Hebrews chapter 4, verse number 2, uh, uh, verse number 1 and 2, let us therefore fear lest our promise being left us of entering into his rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them, wow. not being mixed with faith, and they had heard it. What I want to tell you about the disciples is they were chosen of God. Yes, sir. They were chosen of God from the foundation of the world. Right. Notice, it's God's responsibility right. to show them what they need to do. To bring them to where he is calling them to. God himself is going to do that. And guess what? For all of us who are his elect, he will do that in every one of our lives. Right. Those who we have chosen from the foundation of the world, yes. you must believe God is one day going to open your understanding. Amen. One day, what you've been hearing for years is going to come clear. It's going to, yes. The light bulb is going to come on. Your heart's going to be open. Yes. And God's going to make it clear. Yes. Even as he did with these apostles here. He made it clear. Let me tell you something. We are elected unto faith. We are elected unto faith. Yes, that's right, brother. You understand? God is going to open. Notice this. He did not say, Blessed art thou, Simon Bar Jonah. But first, we just eliminated that Peter did not put two and two together and come to this conclusion. Then right, he said, Peter, you've been following me all these months. And God just decided that he was going to. Reward you and give you this revelation. No. Peter did nothing to earn what he saw. Amen. He did nothing to earn what God showed him. It was God's good pleasure. We read in Ephesians chapter 1 how God has made known unto us the mystery of his will. In the same way, according to the good pleasure of his will, according to his good pleasure, God did it because that's what seemed good to him. That's what he wanted to do. And you find him revealing at this particular juncture in Christ's ministry who Christ is, okay? Yes. He said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And we look at Jesus' response. Blessed art thou, Simon Bar-Jonah, for flesh and blood 
have not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. Have we not read before over in John chapter 6 that when Jesus was teaching, notice what he says in John chapter 6. He says this, but I said unto you that ye also have seen me and believe not. Can I tell you that seeing is not believing. <laughs> seeing something is not always believing something. What am I trying to say? You can see something like just as many in Israel saw his miracles and his works, but it did not cause a transformation in their lives. It did not change their point of view concerning him. They had, a, they had an earthly point of view concerning him because what were they looking for? They were looking for a Messiah to come and to redeem them, not in the sense of a spiritual redemption, but a, a, a redeemer that would save them from all of their enemies. Right. That would bring them from under the bondage of the Roman government. That would sit them at the pinnacle of all the nations and they would rule under the authority of the Messiah. But we find the Messiah coming and not fulfilling their expectations. We see answers such as when Peter gave the Lord when the Lord began to reveal to him his deceased. They didn't understand. All right. I mean, you've been waiting for this all your life. You've been hearing about this and now he's here and he's talking about dying. They said, oh no! That's all. You just got here. You can't die now. You got some work to do. You got to set your kingdom up. You, you're the one, right? Yes. But they don't understand. They, what they didn't understand is that this kingdom, though it be invisible, God before this kingdom would be manifested and would, would be the kingdom in which the whole world would submit to, God will first fill his kingdom with, with his subjects. Amen. God's kingdom would first be in the hearts of men. In the hearts. That's clear right there, brother. Yeah. That's right. Before he brings about a visible rule, yes, sir. he will show his rule in the hearts and the lives of his people. Yes. 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 Notice he says this, we're still all of the Father giveth me shall come to me, and him that come to me I will in no wise cast out. He didn't say they come and the Father gives. He said the Father gave and they come. Yeah. Right. Let's, not, let's, not, let's not get that backwards. Many people right. said, I came and the Father gave me the Christ. No, yeah. because he gave you the Christ, you came. Yeah. For I came down from heaven not to do my own will, but the will of him that sent me. Okay, you want to know what the will of God is. Here it is, John 6, 39. And this is the Father's will, which has sent me. That of all which ye have given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up again at the last day. Wow. Who's he going to raise up? Yes. All that the Father has given him. Yes. He's going to, now we understand there's going to be a general resurrection when he raised it, which everybody will come to the dead. But he's speaking primarily of those whom the Father has given him, what to redeem, to justify. Yes. You know, uh, those that he's given to redeem, to justify, to purchase. Amen. Amen. Yeah. He's speaking of those in particular. Yeah. <laughs> and this is the will of him that sent me, that everyone who received the Son and believed in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up the last day. Notice this, when, when, when Peter saying, Thou art the Son of God, he's saying something of Christ that only God could reveal to him. Right. You are the Son of God. You are the one that has always been. Yes. Right. His fellowship with the Father has no beginning. Yes. He is the only begotten in the bosom of the Father. Yes. Before the world was, Christ was right there. Yes. Oh God, Christ yes. was right there. And when you don't understand that love relationship between the Father and the Son, when we're born again, we just enter into that. Yes. We're brought into that fellowship. Yes. But that fellowship has always been. Yes. Before the world began. Yeah. And, 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 and the people that those that see him, not as Mary and Joseph's son, but see him as the son. Yes. Yes. Those yes. see him as the son, their eyes have to be open. Yes. Yes. Right. Yes. 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 
John chapter 6, you see the Father doing a lot of things in, in John chapter 6. Right. The Father, you know, the Father draws up. And the, and the Father, he gave him the price. And then, uh, then of course, um, he says uh, in verse 41, the Jews didn't murmur at him because he said, I am the bread which came down from heaven. And he said, is not this Jesus? There's their perspective, their human perspective. Is this not Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How it is that he said, I came down from heaven. Jesus therefore answered and said unto them, Murmur not among yourselves. No man can come. No man can come, which denotes power and ability. You don't have the power nor the ability to come to him. And he makes one exception. There's only, way, there's only one way you're going to come to Christ. Notice what he says. Here's the Father again. Except the Father, which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up. Amen. Praise the Lord. 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 We got to hurry. We got to hurry. Now look. He says, Yeah. You didn't get this from the synagogue. You did not get this from the university. You can get this from our seminary. Our Father in heaven. And I say unto thee that thou art Peter. And upon this rock I will build my church, yeah. and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Yeah. He said, I say to thee that thou art Peter, which comes from the word Petra, which means a stone. That's right. He's not calling him All right. the means by which the church will, he's not saying the church will be built upon him. That's right. I don't need it. No. But what he's saying is this, upon this rock, I will build my church. He just told you what the rock was. <laughs> the rock was what? Christ. Jesus, it says what? Thou art the Christ, Amen. the Son of the living God. Every individual that is brought into this new term that's being used, the church, has to know this. There's no interest into, into fellowship with God and Christ without knowing this. Right. Right. You're not going to tell me I was a Christian for 20 years and I finally found out that Jesus was the Christ. Well, you just started Christianity there. <laughs> you, you never started 20 years ago. Right. Yeah, that's good. You, I mean, <laughs> your walk with God it began there. That's right. But notice it says it says. And upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I think about something. Because according to Ephesians chapter, mm -hmm. according to Ephesians chapter 2, mm -hmm. and if you look at the, the latter portion of that particular scripture, it says that Peter, like the other apostles, are in the foundation. Notice it talks about the church. Verse 19, now therefore you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints in the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Right. Notice, they're built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Notice, the church is built upon the foundation that, that they laid what Christ had given them to preach. Right. That message, that's right. Brother. It's built upon that message. Right. That's right. And Christ the is revealed in that message. Who he is and what he's come to do is yes. revealed in that message. Yes, sir. And there is built upon the foundation. Now, the, the, the most important part of a structure is not as the cornerstone. Yeah, right. right. Because it is the place where it sets the pattern of the building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You see, several walls are, are connected because of the cornerstone. Yes, if you don't have a cornerstone, then the building's going to fall. Right. Yes, sir. But it, Jesus Christ is the most important part. It's built upon him. But the apostles laid that foundation in their preaching. Yes. And how important are they to uh, the erection of the church? Notice in, in Revelation chapter 21, notice the New Jerusalem mm -hmm. is upon 12 foundations, right? right? And upon those 12 foundations are the names of the what? The apostles. The apostles, right? right? So the revelation that he gave to them... Right. They gave to us. Yes, sir. Right. Right. right? And the church was erected upon them. Yeah. Right? Okay. Now, as we move on, it says, 
I will build my church. Now notice, where oftentimes we'll have many that will uh, point to the the passage of scripture there in uh, Acts chapter 7, of which uh, Dickens Stephen makes a reference to the word church in regards to the assembling of the elect Jews, if you will. Let's turn there very quickly. Notice verse 38 in Acts chapter 7. We'll look at verse 37 first. And this is that Moses which said unto the children of Israel, A prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you of your brethren like unto me. Him shall ye hear. This is he that was in the church in the wilderness. With the angel which spake to him in the Mount Sinai, and with our fathers who received the light of the oracles to give unto us. This church is not used, this, 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 this word church is not used in the same way that Christ is used. Because that word dealt with the congregation of the Israelites. It was primarily Jews, right? It was the assembly, they were, they were called out, if you will, into for worship, for the worship of Jehovah and Yahweh. But when he speaks of this church, this church comes from a Greek word, ekklesia, uh, which means, there's two words, there's ek, which means out, and then there's kaleo, which means calling. They have been called out. No wonder, no wonder we are called the called out ones. Yes. Now, if you understand this particular church, whereas the assembly there and the wilderness were primarily Jews, this church of which Christ says, I will build, that's future. Yes. So that means it was not built before. Right. This is something that he's going to construct that is new and that is different. Right. And he says that this particular church Assembly will be will consist of both Jew and Gentile. Yes, sir. Jew and Gentile. People of all of, of all nationalities, of, of ethnicities, of tongues, and uh, uh, languages, all, all of those, they will be consistent because we are brought together because we've been called out of the world. Yes. We have been called into fellowship yes. with the Lord Jesus Christ through his salvation. Yes. We have been called into the enjoyment and the communion of his salvation. That's the church right there. Right. Yes. That is the church. Right. Yes. I like some, some, some of the things when it talks about being called out because many people say, well, I come and I gather here at the church. But that doesn't constitute you a, a part of, of his body. Right. Because the called out ones are just not called away from the house to come and assemble here. All right. Peter says, ye are a chosen generation. Ye are a royal priesthood. Ye are a holy nation. Amen. He says, a peculiar people to show forth what? The praises of him who have called you from your house over here to the church. No. Who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I don't care where we meet. I'm not in darkness anymore. I don't care where you sit up there. I'm no longer under the dominion of sin. Where are you going to up and sing songs and pray? You just know I'm no longer in darkness. He says over there in Colossians, how we have been. Yes. In Colossians chapter 1. Mm -hmm. I love this particular scripture in Colossians chapter 1. Notice these words. It says, Giving thanks to the Father which has made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light, who hath delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his. Dear son. He's a king. See, what you gotta understand, I was dead and I couldn't move myself. So what he what he had to do, he had to move me himself. He, he literally took you out of Adam and put you in Christ. His holy hands moved you. You didn't get there by holding hands and walking there. He picked you up and put you there. Prevail against it. You think about these gates often. 
times, Old Testament times, we look at Gates, uh, you'll see, um, for instance, I think about Lot, how he was known there in the gates of the city, like as a judge. Think about the gates uh, dealing with you know, uh, authority and, and power. It talks about the gates of hell, the gates of hell, which is the Greek word Hades, which is the realm of the dead, if you will. The gates of Hades shall not prevail against his church. And there was one who was given or who had the power of death. We know who that is. Who had the power of death. Because you have to understand, this is the same one who is the author of sin. His power. Notice, God has already told you, I've gone into his camp and, and took you out of there to place you in me. Nothing he can do about it. <laughs> but not only that, he says, I'm going to build my church and the mission that I have ordained to go forth is not going to be able to stop. Say that again, brother. The audition, the, 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 the mission that the Lord has ordained. Yeah. Satan will not be able to stop it. He may arise and try to hinder. He may arise and, 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 and try to and try to get us off track. He may try to do many things, but he will not prevail. Right. The gates of hell. Now think about these gates as enclosing people in. Christ said these gates will not prevail. You know what? The very reason why the Lord even saved the Apostle Paul. I think about when the Apostle Paul is standing before the king of Rome when he's on his way to Rome. Notice these words by the Apostle Paul. He tells him this is the reason why he appeared unto him. He says to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the, here goes the gates of hell here, the power of Satan unto God and they may receive forgiveness of sins and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in Yeah. The gates of hell will not prevail. In Hebrews chapter 10, we think about we're getting ready to close because we can, we can take this a lot further. In Hebrews chapter 2, that is, we find that um, the Hebrew writer when speaking about the incarnation of Christ where it says in verse 14, 14, to 14 for as much as the children are made are partakers of flesh and blood, he also himself likewise took part of the saying that through death he might destroy him that had the power of death. That is the devil. And deliver them who do fear of death for all their lifetime subject to bondage. He puts it this way in 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse number 10. How Christ has abolished death. And has brought life and might and brought life and immortality to life through the gospel. When he talks about abolished death, it's the same word used as destroyed here in Hebrews chapter 2. He has, he has caused it to cease. No, this causing to cease is not temporary. Uh, Christ is not saying, I've caused it to cease. You guys got to try a little harder so the prince of the power of the air doesn't get stronger. No, he said, I've caused it to cease once and for all. Yes. Right, brother. Satan held the advantage over sinners. Right. Right. Why? Because he was their father. Mm. He had this power of death, if you will. Mm. And all oh, they were fearing what is to come and the life to come. That's right. <laughs> but I want to get it on to, to all those who are who have been quickened by the Lord Jesus. I want you to know that you don't you don't have to fear death any longer. Right. Because right. death carries a certain expectation for the children of God. That's right. Don't you understand that when we are hmm, when, when we die and we're separated from this body, that we're not separated from God? Right. <laughs> I believe the apostle Paul tells us in Romans chapter 8 at the very at the conclusion of, of Romans chapter 8. I am persuaded that neither life nor yeah. death. Yeah. Right. No principalities, no power. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Things present, things to come. No height, no depth, any creature shall be able to separate yeah. for the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Death yeah. does not separate us. Right. Oh God. Christ has dealt with Satan, that crushing defeat. The Bible lets us know how the 
So man, how he was manifested that he might destroy what? Works. The works yeah. of the devil. Satan has been destroyed by his once and for all sacrifice. Yes. And I want you to know the, uh, the, the, the gates of hell are not going to prevail. We're going to be able to carry out this great commission. This great commission in Matthew chapter 28, of which the Lord promises his abiding presence to those that carry out this divine mission of which he says, Lord, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. I think about a song that we used to sing often when, when we were in the old church. We've sung it a few times here. But there's a particular hymn, I believe, that, 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 I, that I love, and that is uh, How Firm a Foundation. Yeah. And I want you to notice down in verse number five. <laughs> uh -huh. I'm trying to hold it together. Verse number five. He says that that, that soul, that old Jesus, has leaned for repose. I will not. I will not. Desert to his foes. That soul, though all hell, should endeavor to sing. But I will never. I will never. I will never forsake. I see God in the sacredness of his three persons. I believe the song writer put it there because the Father says, I won't forsake you. The Son says, I won't forsake you. The Holy Spirit says, I won't forsake you either. He says, I will never forsake. Hallelujah. Of the purchased possession. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Well, we think about the Holy 
Spirit sealing us until the day of redemption. We've been all made. One thing that we're able to say, you say, you got the Holy Spirit, but if you're born again, I have it too. Right? And see, we, we, we hear the world today use that word anointing. You hear anything they say it on TV. And they, and they go and they talk about my anointing. If you want to get this anointing, you got to go where I've gone. You got to suffer what I'm suffering and do all that stuff, whatever. The anointing is used in the New Testament right. as another word of saying Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yeah. 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 That's what it is. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Speaks of it. And, and John, 1 John 2 and 27. Right. We talk about this anointing that you have received of him. He said, this anointing, but the anointing which you have received of him yeah. abideth in you, yeah. and you need not that any man teach you. Yeah. That does not do away with um, pastors and, and pastors and evangelists. It doesn't do away with them. But it is, what it's saying is this. But as the same anointing teach you all things, and it's true and it's no lie, even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. Really, to understand what they're saying, you're going to need a resident teacher in you. Right. 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 Yes, sir. Yeah, People say, I wouldn't know what I know if it went for Pastor so and so. I would tell you something. Mm -hmm. Holy Spirit yeah, he's a teacher. is a teacher. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And he's able, sometimes when you're sitting at your seat and someone, sometimes when you're sitting at your seat and someone is teaching, even passages of scripture you've never heard before. But if you are a, a studier of God's word, the Holy Spirit will begin to bring your mind about the scriptures to confirm yeah. what they're saying. Yeah. Right. Yeah. While they're speaking, other scriptures are coming to your mind. Yes. Right. And you know what you're saying? That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. That's right. Yes. It's not right because your pastor said it's right. It's right because scripture confirms. Right. Oh, that's right. Amen. Exactly right. But he said you're going to give him the keys to the kingdom of heaven. Or whatsoever you shall bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loose in heaven. Let me close by saying this. You think about these keys as having authority and access, oftentimes you'll find that stewards were given keys to a house. They were able to, uh, to gain access to different portions of the house. It speaks of the authority that they have. According to Isaiah chapter 22 and 22, notice this in reference to keys. It speaks to uh, Eliakim, if you will. Isaiah chapter 22, 22. Let me just read this very quickly. It says, uh, Uh, verse number 20, we start there. And it shall come to pass that day I will call my servant Eliakim, the son of Hilkiah, and I will clothe him with thy robe, strengthen him with thy girdle. I will commit thy government into his hand. He shall be a father to the heavens of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah, and the key of the house of David, where I lay upon his shoulder. So he shall open, and none shall shut, and he shall shut, and none shall open. You have to understand, this, 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 these keys, this key to the kingdom, of heaven, of which the Lord will give to, to the apostle Peter to do what? To preach. He says to bind and to loose. It's not all this stuff that you're hearing out right. here in the world right. where you see people saying, I had to go bind a few spirits today, whatever. You know, oh, you did, huh? Or oh, uh, 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 everybody, let's get together and let's bind Satan. <laughs> I mean, a lot of ridiculous notions that have nothing to do with what the scripture means. Right. This binding and loosing, loosing has to do with this because those, um, if you think about uh, those words are in the perfect uh, passive participle, which means it's it's a state that is derived by by uh, 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 by the results of an action, if you will, the, the finished state of, of an action, if you will. Just to put it in, in layman's terms, it's, it's the state that's brought it or brought about by an action. What is he saying? It's not heaven telling. It's not earth telling heaven what to do. No. Mm -hmm. It's not you declaring and decreeing some things down here, as many people say. And then God's getting to work saying, oh, I got to do that. Oh, I got to do that. Oh, this, that. And it, it, your angels get to work. They decree and declare things. I got to do it because my reputation is on the line. No. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> we are declaring right. what is already settled in heaven. Yes, sir. Right. Right. What does the scripture say about the forgiveness of sin? Yes. That's what is to be decreed yes. and declared. Right. What does the scripture say about anything? And you think about the Apostle Peter, what did he do when he took these keys there at, at the day of Pentecost and he preached to the Jews there at the Feast of Pentecost? Guess what? What happened as a result of that preaching? Hearts of prick, right? Yes, sir. He, he never said there was an altar call, right? Yes, sir. 
Never said this. Does anybody want to come to Christ? He preached that one said, guess what? Who was doing the work? Yeah, oh, yeah. The Holy Spirit. Spirit was doing that. Yes. No gimmicks. Right. No nothing. Yeah, right. and, and that's why I tell you today, many times people say this, yeah, I didn't even give an offer call. What kind of church is that? <laughs> but we, don't, we, don't, we don't find it in the scriptures. It's not there. It ain't there. No. No, no. That was instituted no. really in the 1800s. That's not there. Guess what they preached? People were convicted and yes. came. Amen. God did the change. Uh, God did the transform. Yeah. You, you, you mean if you don't have a mortgage bitch, no one can be saved? I don't care where you are. God can save you. Yes, sir. Yes. Mortgage bitch or no mortgage bitch. Yeah. Yes. One thing that's true of God's elect is that they will mourn yes, because of sin. Yes. That is the state of the blessed ones. Yes. Oh, guess what? Those that mourn, they're going to be comforted, right? Yes. Guess what? So this, so this has to do with God, us declaring what God has, what God prohibits, and what God permits. It's already simple. When you think about it, Peter goes not only there, and it says that there were over how many that got saved there at Pentecost? 2,000? 3,000? Excuse me, 3,000? That were saved, that were added to the church, such as should be saved? Should be saved. They were added to the church. Yeah. They didn't yeah. sign a roll and join. They became because God added them. God put them in his body. Yes. God brought them in fellowship. Yes. And then not only did they come in fellowship with God, but they came into fellowship with others that had already been saved. Right? Yes. Right. And then we find also in Acts chapter 10 where the apostle Peter went to the house of Cornelius. You talk about an altar call, yes, as sir. soon as Peter finishes preaching, God's already doing some saving right there. Amen. 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 Glory. Amen. 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 I mean, look guys, I mean, it was just, it was, it was happening as fast as it came out of his mouth. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Tell you what he says here. Amen. Master stand, stand. Amen. Master stand. Amen. It says in Acts chapter 10, it says, after, after, after uh, the, the apostle Peter says in verse 43, to him give all the prophets witness that through his name, whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake Say these again. words, when? while wow. Peter yet yeah. spake yeah. these yeah. words, what the Holy Ghost fell yeah. on all them which yes. heard the right. words. Yes, sir. Yes. Wow, he spake these words. Yes, sir. Glory be to God. Yes. God is in the saving business. Yes. It's what he does. He is, he is that Savior. Yes. Wherever he chooses yes. to save, wherever he chooses to open your eyes and bring you from darkness to light, wherever he chooses to quicken you, that's up to him. Trust me, you're not going to get the credit for it. When it's all said and done. Amen. Let's bow our heads and word of prayer. Yes. Father, we give you prayer. We give you thanks, honor, and glory. We love you. Yes, Lord Jesus. We pray, Father, that what was spoken here, Father, yes. will be the help to your saints. Yes, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Yes. Amen. Amen. Amen.